I try uh, not to take uh, Twitter that seriously. I found that I'm much more uh, a teacher than a researcher and uh, learned the hard way because uh, my job is at a research uh, institution and my job really was uh, to uh, write books, write articles, etc. And I first got on Twitter because I couldn't write anymore. I struggled so much with writing and um, Twitter was for me the great uh, liberator somehow. Um, I felt completely different to write there. Um, and I could write about uh, the same things that I couldn't write about uh, in this book. I was writing about critical theory. Uh, I was writing about uh, uh, philosophy in various forms or, or, or literature in various forms, but it was such a different context for writing um, that I actually found some joy in it again, which I had not found uh, for many years, actually. So for me, it's been a great thing uh, in that respect, but I also think that things on the internet come and go quickly. Uh, who knows if there'll be a Twitter in a year, in two years. Um, and so I guess uh, I see it as uh, something that's, that's interesting right now in this moment. It's done a lot for me, but it's not something that I want to get uh, that attached to um, because I, I, I feel like that would be a mistake. The first tweet I wrote was nine, <laughs> period. I think that was the, the first thing I did. Um, I don't really remember uh, so much about uh, uh, what it was like um, when, say, no one was following this or who my first follower was. I mean, one of the really interesting things about Twitter is to see how strange that network is and how, how much chance uh, plays a role in it all um, and how... Uh, uh, you end up um, as part of a very complicated community, actually, and very um, uh, broadly distributed. Um, I think I have followers in 150 different countries, maybe more uh, in the meantime. And it's, uh, to me, sort of unthinkable, you know, that that, that um, uh, or would have been, you know, that, that you would communicate with so many different people. Um, Certainly writing academic books and so on um, was already a challenge for me uh, for, for various reasons, but especially then the thought of this will be read maybe by a dozen people and 10 of them will hate it. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's very different. And also there's feedback immediately with Twitter. Um, you could call it instant gratification, uh, but only when it's gratifying. <laughs> it can also have a very negative, it can also hurt, uh, it can be disappointing. Um, uh, people sometimes, you know, aren't, you're not protected by ritual there. I mean, anyone can say whatever they want. Um, and so it's uh, very much being out of a certain comfort zone, I mean, to use that terminology, uh, of, of the university, but that's also what makes it so much fun um, and what makes it so interesting. Um, but uh, you're catching me at an interesting moment because I'm right in the middle of, of, of a transition. Um, and still trying to figure out how to navigate that. A lot of what I've done, I started doing really, um, in some ways because of a frustration with, with my academic career, um, personally, probably more than anything. Um, but there are also many rituals of academic life that to me um, are exactly those things that, that, that rob uh, the kind of, um, uh, esprit that that it might have otherwise um, that there's a lot of there's a lot of showmanship there's a lot of uh, um, there's a lot of concern about appearances obviously um, there are uh, uh, many concerns about image etc and um, I understand that I mean it's something that w would exist in any in any career I think um, but uh, one of the things that has always bothered me is, for instance, just how academics communicate. I mean, we have this form of an academic talk, right? Um, and uh, I will freely admit that my attention span is not very long. Um, but I also know that I'm not the only one uh, whose attention span is not very long. Um, and yet we continue to deliver talks, uh, uh, texts that were meant to be, they're meant to be read, not listened to. Um, and there's just a fundamental dishonesty with ourselves about that, of, 
Um, why don't we why don't we leave the security of a finished text uh, with with everything very uh, 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 finely formulated and in fact take some more risks uh, and in taking that risk of say speaking more uh, to an audience with an audience um, with colleagues um, putting more of oneself out there I think is riskier but uh, uh, has a much greater payoff um, because essentially everyone knows this. Uh, you go to an academic talk and offer them questions. There's nothing, yeah? It's very hard because you couldn't latch onto anything to ask a question about. Um, or, uh, and there's a lot of polite kind of acting as if we've all understood and all followed. Uh, something that was very hard or maybe impossible to follow. Um, and for me, that was one of the greatest sources of frustration was that kind of model of communication that was more a ritual event than actual, I mean, obviously ritual involves communication, but um, of a very different sort. Um, and uh, Twitter was a way to, to take that stuff apart. Um, it was uh, one of the things that I, I do a lot of is sort of making fun of, of uh, the institution and making fun of myself in sort of this professor role. Um, uh, I think that's very important uh, not to lose sight of. I mean, you have to have a sense of humor about yourself when you're when you're when you're doing this stuff. Um, I'll, probably my most frequent topic is Twitter itself, uh, uh, making fun of that. Uh, but I think that that's that's important, um, and it's something that uh, I think maybe uh, academic life doesn't leave enough room for. Uh, I think that there's a there's there's a desire for it. There's an appetite for it. Um, but I don't know if we've found ways to uh, incorporate that into uh, our jobs every day, really, um, of, of just breaking out of some of those set ways of, of doing things.